Nigeria's central bank has again introduced long-term contracts on the Naira in a bid to attract more foreign inflows, shore up its dwindling dollar reserves, and preserve the currency from weakening further. We understand that Nigeria's external reserve could be the net beneficiary of a planned $3.3 billion euro bond issuance, for which the ex executive branch has sought clearance from parliament. As at 12th of February, foreign reserves was pegged at 36 point. $532 billion. And last month, Central Bank Governor Gordon Imifele said that no adjustment of the Naira was planned and that the bank would continue to sustain the value of the currency even though its dollar reserve was shrinking. Now in the studio joining me is Gospel Obele. He's the CEO of Streetnomics. He's an economist. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you, Irene. Yes, Irene, certainly. Yeah. Uh, we, you definitely know the state of uh, Nigeria's economy currently. So uh, how attractive would you say Nigeria's economy is currently? Uh, fundamentally not attractive mm. <coughs> to investors. Um, what you have looking at it from that CBN perspective is um, the Apex Bank is pressured to manage a currency. And um, that borders on two things. The, we are now beginning to reap the severe effects of the structural imbalances and then a long history of fiscal indiscipline from, from the fiscal side. So the Apex um, Bank is pressured to manage the Naira. And in doing that, um, they're creating other streams, many streams of um, many windows, you know, through which the currency can be managed. And because you already have a de demand supply imbalance in the system, then you don't have an option than to keep taking out from the reserves to manage these different pockets of, um, of um, um, imbalances per se. So that's the current challenge we have in the economy. And with the rising security issue and um, mm. the police Political will not align with capacity to enable the economy, you know, move from where it is to where it should be. Then you have that gross drop in um, investor confidence and the likes. Yeah. Now, should it be a cause of concern? Currently, the CBN's intervention uh, has risen between first quarter and fourth quarter quarter of 2019. We saw that the CBN intervention was uh, at 7.5 billion dollars. We see that our uh, reserves currently, as at the 12th of February, was 36.5. Three billion dollars. Isn't this? Shouldn't this be a cause for concern? It's, it's a major cause for concern because, um, in as much as yes, the CBN should be or a central bank should be doing so much to manage the currency, mm -hmm. you also find out that the CBN is also doubling to manage for those deficits in the economy. So it's spending so much to manage the currency. I'm not forgetting that the strength of the currency is dependent on the level of productivity of that economy. Exactly. So, so if your economy is not productive, it means that in view of global competitiveness and even national productivity, your currency will be very weak no matter what you do. So it's like trying to fetch your tower with a basket, all right? So the central bank is paying so much, going through a hard time trying to manage the currency. And because you see a lot of interventions coming up back and forth, that's to tell you that the economy is not actually in good shape and the currency is pretty weak. So would you suggest that rather than, um, you know, trying to manage and preserve the value of the currency, we should let it, you know, move according to its exact <laughs> value? The, the, at the end of the day, you know, there's a report that says that at the end of the day, the CBN would have to devalue. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. All right. So are you so, saying that people that have their monies in Naira <laughs> should start to convert it? Well, it's wise to do that, seemingly. But mm. um, what would uh, what would have to do to come out of this at the end of the day would be, you know, ensuring that um, th there's a strong support from the fiscal side and we are dealing with the core issues, you know, that pertains to doing business and enabling the currency thrive, you know, uh, from a productive economy basis. If we don't have that in view, no matter what we do, no matter how many initiatives or interventions the central bank trying to bring to the fore, you find that at the end of the day we may still have to devalue because the currency is vulnerable to not just global oil prices. Now we're beginning to see that drop, uh, but more or less to an economy that is not functional. And, um, uh, and high on cost, basically. Now, let's just um, quickly take a look at the trade balance. We see that for imports in 2018, it was at 9.6 trillion naira. 2019, 11.6 trillion naira. That's for imports. And we see, um, you realize that we imported more in 2019 than in 2018. What should we make out of this? So it's, it's a strongly import-driven economy, no matter how you want to look at the dynamics. And you, to surprise you, it's a lot easier to import than to export. Mm. The documentation around importation is 
pretty easier, you know, to facilitate them than exports. There are more complexities around exportation. There is a consumer demand, there's a lifestyle, there's a taste um, conversation around imports. Mm. There's also a major Nigeria narrative that has not been properly sold in a compelling way around um, the, the challenges on imports. So there's a whole lot more to be done in that space to drop those numbers. But we need to also, on the export side, focus on the non-oil exports environment, fix access to markets, access to finance, exporters' mm -hmm. education, market intelligence, a series of you know, cluster issues like that that would you know, enable exports become the business and the driver of the Nigerian economy. Thank you so much, Gospel, for your time. Thank you so much. That's Thank all we can have at this me. time.